All right, hey guys, welcome back. Sorry for the long delay. I know I said I wasn't gonna do that, but uh, as I'm sure you can all understand, life happens. And as you know, if you were watching before, uh, I had to move, so that's all done and behind us. And don't have to worry about that anymore, so back to work. Just in time to go get surgery in four days again on my shoulder, so. I'm going to be out of commission for six weeks in a sling and then uh, probably another six or eight weeks before I can fly. But uh, the airplane is basically done. So I figured I better give you guys an update here. I am going to finish the last few things in the next couple of days before I go for surgery. It's uh, Thursday night right now and I'll be going Monday morning. So, before we get into the airplane, I just wanted to take a minute to thank a couple people. Dale, who reached out via email uh, with uh, some information as to where to find a gearbox. And also to Seth. Seth, you know who you are. Uh, ended up getting a gearbox from Seth, and it all worked out great. So, thank you, Seth, for that. It was extremely speedy it only took two weeks from the time i posted that video till the time i had this in my hand so let's have a look at the airplane all right so as you can see the gearbox is on it uh, all went very smooth the taper on the crank was the same and everything bolted up the only thing that was different obviously was the bolt because the didn't have the clutch, so I put a new bolt in the end of the crank to hold that gear on and uh, made that adapter plate there, which is affixed to the block via the motor mount, as you can see. Uh, plug wires are cut and done. Coolant system is in and bled. Um, oil system is all in. It's still, the tank is still empty. I still need to figure out a way to vent the tank. So I did order a, a vent that I thought I'd drill in the cap that I was thinking was fairly small, but this showed up and that's obviously not going to work. I was thinking it was more like 5 sixteenths, but I guess I should have read a little closer because that might have said 5 eighths. <laughs> um, what else? Got, uh, yeah, oil system is in. The only thing left to do on the engine side of the oil system is down here this line right here supplies an oil bath it's actually just a vent line for this oil bath so this oil bath gets filled when you build the crank case and you put the halves together you fill this oil bath and then you put the halves together keeping in mind normally this is below this these are reversed and then this is the vent so think if I just put a vacuum on this and suck all the air out and then dip it into a, a jug of oil and suck oil back into this oil bath and then hook this line up to the 90 that I got. That's the line there. To that 90 back there. To the tank. Then that bath will stay full and it'll be able to vent back and forth into the tank. So now I just need the tank to vent. Got a oil level, low oil warning gauge in there. I need to mount the control box for the strobe lights, which will mount right there somewhere. Auxiliary fuel pump is in. So pretty much the only thing left to do is run these fuel lines, plumb the whole fuel system, but all the pumps are in. Uh, there's three fuel pumps. There's that one. 
There's the main, which is a twin to this one. And then I put a, because these pumps sit on top of the tank, I put a four to five PSI boost pump down here. So it'll come down out of the tank into that boost pump and then back up through these three eighths lines into the main and auxiliary fuel pumps out of the pumps to a check valve and then into a T and then into the fuel pump or sorry the fuel filter which will sit down in here and then somehow I'm not sure how yet but that fuel line is going to come over here to the ECU out the bottom of the ECU and then down here somehow to here and then return here back up through the firewall somewhere into this fuel pressure regulator and somewhere before that fuel pressure regulator I got to put the uh, block in for the fuel pressure sensor and then from that fuel pressure regulator which will sit down in here in this space it'll come back to the filler neck on the fuel tank and return to the tank there i'll show you this first i guess inside so all the wiring is done. It's all plug and play, the whole panel. Everything just plugs in with the exception of this dimmer switch. Because you're going to have to, if I want to take the panel off, I'll have to pop that dimmer switch off. But that's the only thing that has to be removed from the panel. And then I put... Uh, Battery cutoff behind the seat. And then uh, this seat cushion pops out and then there's a little door that opens up. So we'll be able to just reach in right here and turn that off or on. And uh, I put, because the panel was wired for it, so I put lights and a usb port in the cargo compartment we'll go over here this is the new panel it's a pretty basic panel i wasn't able to get the avionics that i thought i ordered because it turns out uh, the primary flight display that i ordered was actually just a software update i knew the price was too good to be true uh, so if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. <laughs> so it only took four months to find out. But uh, the one thing the airplane does not have is a transponder. So I'm not flying into any airports as is, off airport only. But I was just looking at the little T-22, smallest transponder in the world or whatever, and there's a radio that kind of goes with it that I think would fit in this space, both of them. One here and one here. And if worse came to worse, I think I could move the radio, would be gone, move this all the way over and put the two gauges here somewhere. The transponder and radio i mean so i might order those but for now i only got three days to get this all buttoned up and as of this minute thursday night this has no way to mount into the airplane so the old panel just mounted through a couple of these screw holes wherever it was and then bolted to right into the tank there's some inserts or some screws that go in there that are on rubber on bushings 
and then with another bolt sticking out and I screw into there so it's kind of got some shock absorption and then as well on the top so the panel and the dash cover I guess you could call it is all one piece on the old one and I want it to be two pieces that will screw together and create more structure but I want it to, to be two pieces so I can pop the top off if I need to so that I can unplug all the wires and stuff and then unbolt the panel and pull it out all right i think that's going to be it for this one uh check back next week if you want to see the panel in i'll have the panel and interior all back together everything done in there and everything done out here with the exception of the pipe and then the programming that needs to be done thanks for stopping by